Daddy's Workshop of the Carolinas where we treasure things made and restored by hand. Well, if you've got a vintage table saw, one of the big questions is what do you do for a splitter? These old vintage machines do not have riving knives, something that raises and lowers uh, with the blade. They do, though, many times have splitters or guards that came with them originally. Although by the time they ended up in your hands now, 50, 60, 70 years later, from school shops and machine shops and cabinet shops and so forth, those guards are long gone. I've got several unisaws here in the background. None of them have the original blade guard. Some of them do have the uh, shaft that came off the back. Some of them do have the part that mounts in here. Very few of them have the actual guard. And because those guards were so cumbersome, I do have some later guards called the Uniguard that came about. But the big question of a splitter is a safety feature that many people want to add to a saw and you really can't add a true riving knife unless you have some serious uh, machining capabilities. There are some people that have done so and you can find that online. Uh, but it's a pretty complex process to retrofit a vintage table saw with a true riving knife that lowers and elevates with the blade. So you have a few options to retrofit a, a vintage machine with a splitter of sorts. Now there is an option that Delta provided for many years. This was called the Delta Discipline Hearing Splitter or Pop-Up Splitter. This is a used version of it here and I'll just to give you an idea here. Uh, this pops up and down, right? And that would mount uh, to this back trunnion bracket here. While it does not automatically raise and lower with the blade, you can lower it below the table with a simple push, which means then uh, you can just have it out of the way when you're doing your dado cuts, and then it uh, can be pulled right back up for through cuts after you're done with your dado cuts. So that's the Delta Disappearing Splitter. Now, it is hard to find this new available. There are some sellers on eBay that sell it periodically, new old stock. You can find it used. Um, until recently, uh, Amazon had it available for a little over 100 bucks, um, but that no longer is the case. Renovo Parts does have it as well, uh, but this one can be a little hard to find. Uh, we'll do a zoom in on that and talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. But one of the newer options, well not necessarily really new at this point, but newer than the Disappearing Splitter option, is the Shark Guard. Uh, big thanks to my friend Jeff for having this uh, sent here to do a little test before he puts it on his saw. And thanks to Ronnie for sending it here. Shark Guard makes a lot of great products with digit machines. And this is their uh, splitter option for, one of their splitter options for the uh, Delta Unisol. And so in this case, you have a mounting bracket similar to this idea. And then in this case, you've got a, a splitter that is shaped to uh, mimic the saw blade. And then you've got your mounting block. And then in this case, just a simple uh, turning of this uh, lever here allows you to raise and lower the splitter as necessary. So it's a similar idea. Uh, so we'll do a little zoom in here. You can look at both of these, and then we'll put them both on the saw, test them out a little bit, and uh, do some evaluations. OK, so here we got a little zoom in here. We can see the Delta disappearing splitter uh, that Delta did make. And then also here's the Shark Guard. Came in this uh, box, well packed and so forth. And so we'll show you how they install here. So all we did is take off the throat plate here. The disappearing splitter has two holes that mount through the trunnion bracket. And then you've got the, uh, the bolts to attach. And then from there you can get an idea. It'll mount securely to that. Uh, you do have to shift a little bit. The holes are a little oversized so you can line it up perfectly with the actual saw blade and you can do so with sort of a combination square or a straight edge to make sure you're in line. And then you want to do some careful first few cuts just to make sure. Uh, the, the benefit of this one, as we talked about, uh, it goes up and down uh, just with a simple push. And then this one does also have kickback pulls, um, uh, which can be a, a benefit. Okay, so then we're on to the shark guard. As we said, this is a newer option. Pretty impressed with the fit and finish. Seems to be well machined, uh, robust, heavy duty. And so similar uh, mounting setup. You've got two bolts to go into the rear trunnion bracket. Just get them hand started here. I've taken the blade off to facilitate this process. Otherwise, it would be quite challenging. Okay, so I've just finger tightened those, obviously, to give you an idea here. 
the holes are oversized in this red mounting bracket so we can get that lined up perfectly in line with the blade. I'll just tighten it a little bit more just so we can get a little better idea. Okay, and so in this case, loosen the lever, the orange lever, and you can pull up that uh, riving knife to the proper height, and then also uh, it can come all the way off. So you can get your height perfectly right, tighten it down, and then it also uh, came with these uh, Allen keys, so you can get an idea there. Slide up and down very easily just with the turn of the orange knob. Okay, so we'll take a few minutes and just try to tighten it up to get it lined up with the blade, see how difficult that is. Okay, so we've got this one mounted and all lined up. The process wasn't too hard. All right, so we'll give it a try. So, worked fine, everything's lined up well. Didn't bind or anything. So it seems to be installed just about right. Again, as you install it first, I'd keep an eye on it and just be careful the first few just to make sure. Um, but that's certainly going to do its job. It's going to keep the, uh, the curb open and give you that extra layer of safety. Now let's take a look at the other one. And so the installation for this Delta Disappearing Splitter is virtually the same. You have two bolts that mount in the back trunnion bracket and uh, you just got to line everything up similar to the shark guard option. So in this case, it's all mounted, and then, as we talked about, it can go up and down with a simple motion like that. So now we'll do a test cut with this. Okay, so much like the shark guard, it was fairly easy to line up. Uh, we got it uh, aligned pretty quickly. Uh, here you can see this one does have the kickback pulse, which is a difference. And you can see here that that does help resist kickback. I'm pulling backwards and it's, it's resisting it somewhat. Um, probably the biggest differences that I'm noticing besides the kickback pulse, um, this one really flexes a lot. Uh, it's pretty wobbly in its, uh, in its spot. It's not because it's not mounted securely to the bracket, it's just so that, that up and down uh, motion, there's some play in the setup that uh, even a new one, I've, I've installed new ones before, and they still have some play, maybe not quite that much, but um, there is some play there. This one seems to create a, a more rigid splitter, the shark guard option. Uh, you can still, you know, wiggle it a little bit, but not nearly as much as uh, this one, right? The other difference would be obviously with this shape to this splitter, you're gonna get closer to the actual blade and closer to the kerf to open it up more quickly to prevent that pinching on the blade, right? This one, because the shape obviously gets closer to the blade. So that would be another uh, benefit of this option for sure. Um, I will say though that one of the things that was a challenge just with this original plate was that uh, it didn't fit. Uh, this came out just a little bit too far. Um, so I could have just filed away a little bit on there insert to make it fit properly and so forth. I could have fiddled with it more. I just didn't because this is just a test uh, on this specific saw. 
And Shark Guard does make inserts, throat, throat plate inserts as well, that are very nice, very high quality. And I bet you there's, there's no problem with those fitting in there. So I'm just stating that because this, uh, this insert, that was just something I noticed. Even when I pulled it all the way up, um, it just didn't quite clear. Again, it wouldn't have taken long to file it, um, but I'm just noting that. There you have it, very quick evaluation of these two uh, splitter options for the Delta Unisaw. Again, there's not a lot of options uh, with these old vintage saws. Uh, but these two are certainly uh, ones to, to consider. Uh, the benefits of the Shark Guard as well is that um, it is currently made in America and it is an item that you can buy new. Uh, Ronnie does a great job. Um, you, you can call somebody, ask questions, you can make sure to, to get, get you the ones that um, you need or the, the thickness you need depending on what type of blade you use. Whereas um, this is a clearing splitter option, you know, it's, it's going to be something you're going to have to find used or new old stock and there are more parts to it uh, that could fail or need replacing or so forth. So there's just a quick evaluation of the two. Hopefully it's helpful for you. I mentioned that this original shark guard splitter didn't quite fit in this original uh, throat plate insert. Uh, it was bumping into this little section right here. And so I just did want to show you shark guards um, uh, inserts that they uh, fabricate. Uh, very high quality. It's got the um, leveling uh, screws to be able to level it and then they solve the problem here by having one long uh, uh, slit here instead of one for the blade and one for whatever the type of split it is. So they solved the problem that I was encountering with this insert. Uh, that'll fit in there no problem uh, because there's no little segment right there. So just wanted to clarify that, Shark Guard solved that without a problem. So let's recap our findings here. With the Delta disappearing splitter of some of the positives, it is a pretty easy installation. It's adjustable. There's just two bolts and the uh, holes are oversized, which gives you the adjustability you need. It's a very simple pop up and down motion to lift the splitter and lower the splitter. There's no bolts, there's no turning of anything, and kickback pawls are standard equipment. As far as cons go, it is a little bit wobbly due to the design itself. The distance from the blade perhaps leaves a little bit to be desired. There are no kerf thickness options for the splitter. There's really no dust collection compatibility. And nowadays it is getting hard to find. There's limited availability, probably no customer support, and some obsolete parts in the assembly. When it comes to the Shark Guard splitter, definitely very similar installation. Uh, two bolts, oversized holes, just like the disappearing splitter. As far as rigidity goes, I think the Shark Guard gets the upper hand because of the uh, clamping lever that locks down well the uh, rigidity definitely is, is higher on the shark guard option. Closeness to the blade as well due to the arc shape of the splitter. There are curved thickness options, there's dust collection compatibility, all sorts of product options that Ronnie and his folks at Shark Guard provide. They have great service as well. You can call them with questions, email with them with questions, and they can make sure to help you get the product you need. And then as far as cons go, I guess the only thing I'd say is that the kickback pawls would be an add-on, but again, with the, all the options they have, um, they can really set you up with exactly what you need when it comes to your splitter thickness, whether you want kickback pawls or not, uh, whether you're looking for dust collection over the blade and so forth, uh, all sorts of options there. So hopefully this helps you decide when it comes to splitters for vintage Delta Unisols. But we'll get the job done depending on what your needs are. Hopefully this gives you the confidence to give one of them a try, because if I can do it, you can do it.